Welcome to the Secrets of the Bible channel. Do you know what it means to have everything and lose everything in a day? I do. I am Job, and this is my story. I was the richest man among all in the East. Living in the land of Uz, I had 7,000 sheep, 3,000 camels, 500 yoke of oxen, 500 donkeys, and servants to command. I was also blessed with seven sons and three daughters. I feared God and shunned evil. When my sons held feasts in their homes and invited their sisters to eat and drink with them, I made sure they were purified. Early in the morning, I sacrificed a burnt offering for each of them, thinking perhaps my sons had sinned and cursed God in their hearts. On a specific day, while my sons and daughters were feasting and drinking wine at the eldest brother's house, a messenger came to me and said, the oxen were plowing, and the donkeys were grazing nearby, and the Sabians attacked and took them, they killed the servants. And I am the only one who escaped to tell you. While he was still speaking, another messenger came and said, The fire of God fell from the heavens and burned up the sheep and the servants, and I am the only one who escaped to tell you. While he was still speaking, another messenger came and said, The Chaldeans formed three raiding parties and attacked your camels and took them. They killed the servants, and I am the only one who escaped to tell you. Yet again, another messenger came and said, your sons and daughters were feasting and drinking wine at the eldest brother's house, when suddenly a mighty wind swept in from the desert and struck the four corners of the house. It collapsed on them, and they are dead, and I am the only one who escaped to tell you. I was broken. In disbelief I tore my robe and shaved my head. I fell to the ground, moaning and suffering, for my greatest fear had materialized. I took a piece of broken pottery and scraped myself with it, while I sat among the ashes, my own wife said to me, Do you still maintain your integrity? She told me to curse God and die. Those were the words my own wife said to me. I retorted, You are talking like a foolish woman. Shall we accept good from God and not trouble? In all this, I did not blame God for doing evil. I did not sin in what I said. When my friends Eliphaz, Bildad, and Zophar heard about all my tribulations that had occurred to me, they left their homes and met by agreement to comfort me and show solidarity. The three were older than me. When they saw me from a distance, they could hardly recognize me. They began to weep aloud, tore their robes, and threw dust over their heads. Then they sat on the ground with me for seven days and seven nights. No one said a word to me, for they saw how much I was suffering. I opened my mouth and cursed the day of my birth. I exclaimed, May the day of my birth perish and the night that said, A boy is conceived, may that day turn into darkness. May God above not care about it, may no light shine on it. I began to question everything. Why is life given to those in misery and life to the bitter of soul? To those who long for death that does not come, who search for it more than for hidden treasure, who are filled with gladness and rejoice when they reach the grave. Why is life given to a man whose way is hidden, whom God has hedged in? My daily food turned to sighs, my groans poured out like water. What I feared has come upon me. What I dreaded has happened to me. I have no peace, no quietness. I have no rest, but only turmoil. My spirit was broken. My days were shortened. The grave awaited me. Mockers surrounded me. My eyes had to look at their hostility. I prayed, give me, O God, the pledge you demand. Who else will put up security for me? My eyes grew dim with sorrow. My whole body was but a shadow. I said, My days are past, my plans are shattered. My three friends Eliphaz, Bildad, and Zafar comforted me. Like all friends, they intended to strengthen me in my suffering. They also gave their opinion on the matter. They talked about why God allows people to suffer. They believed I was suffering because I had done something wrong. As a result, they repeatedly encouraged me to admit my error and repent so that God would bless me again. Eliphaz concluded that my pain must be due to some sin I had committed, and here he recommended that I seek God's favor. Bildad and Zophar agree that I must have committed evil to provoke God's justice, and argue that I should try to exhibit more innocent behavior. Bildad assumes that my own children brought death upon themselves. Even worse, Zophar responded, Will all these words go unanswered? Will this talker be justified? Will your empty words silence others? Will no one rebuke you when you mock? You say to God, my beliefs are flawless, and I am pure in your eyes. 
Oh, how I wish that God would speak, that he would open his lips against you, and reveal the secrets of wisdom, for true wisdom has two sides. Know this, God even forgot some of your sins. Surely he recognizes deceivers, and when he sees evil, does he not take note? But if you dedicate your heart to him, and stretch out your hands to him, if you put away the sin that is in your hands, and do not let evil dwell in your tent, then, free of guilt, you will lift up your face. You will stand firm and without fear. Surely you will forget your affliction, remembering it only as waters gone by. They presumed my troubles were a sure sign of God's judgment, but I feared God and shunned evil. At one point I grew tired of them. I said to them, Undoubtedly you are the only people who matter, and wisdom will die with you. But I, too, have a mind. I am not inferior to you. Who does not know all these things? I have become a laughingstock to my friends. Although I called to God and he answered, a mere laughingstock, though righteous and blameless. But I desire to speak to the Almighty and argue my case with God. However, you slander me with lies. You are all worthless physicians. If only you would be completely silent. For you, that would be wisdom. Listen now to my argument. Listen to the pleas of my lips. Will you speak wickedly on behalf of God? Will you speak deceitfully for him? Will you show partiality toward him? Will you argue the case for God? Would it go well if he examined you? Could you deceive him as you might deceive a mortal? Surely he would call you to account if you secretly showed partiality. Would not his splendor terrify you? Would not the dread of him fall on you? Even though he slays me, yet will I hope in him. Surely I will defend my ways to his face. Indeed, this will turn out for my deliverance, for no wicked person would dare come before him. Now that I have prepared my case, I know I will be vindicated. Can anyone bring charges against me? If so, I will be silent and die. Just grant me these two things, God, and then I will not hide from you. Withdraw your hand from me and stop frightening me with your terrors. Then summon me and I will answer or let me speak, and you reply to me. How many wrongs and sins have I committed? I am ready to confront God. I would ask him to show me my offense and my sin. God, why do you hide your face and consider me your enemy? You fasten my feet in shackles. You keep close watch on all my paths by putting marks on the soles of my feet. Suffering was too much for me, and now I am bitter, anxious, and frightened. I denounce the injustice of God that allows the wicked to prosper while he and many other honest people suffer. I want to confront God and protest, but I cannot find God physically. I said to my friends, as surely as God lives, who has denied me justice, the Almighty, who has made my life bitter, as long as I have life within me, the breath of God in my nostrils, my lips will not say anything wicked, and my tongue will not utter lies. I will never admit you are right. Till I die, I will not be right. Don't deny my integrity. I will maintain my innocence and never let go of it. My conscience will not reproach me as long as I live. Eventually the Lord intervenes. It is very hard to defend oneself when in such misery. What was my greatest pain? It was physical. I was covered with sores from head to toe, weary and exhausted, and in excruciating pain. My pain was social. Because of my physical appearance and the fact that the local community was aware of my recent tragedy, I became a social outcast. People passed by on the other side of the street instead of talking to me, as I was sitting on the ash heap at the end of the village. Even teenagers laughed at me. My pain was also mental. I faced the mental pain of not knowing why these distressing things were happening to me, especially since there seemed to be nothing in my past that pointed to this. My pain was also spiritual. My spiritual anguish was far worse than any other, for I felt separated from God. This was the truest, most excruciating pain. Suffering is far more agonizing when we believe that God is distant and uninterested. However, when I finally got to speak with God, things did not go as planned. During my speeches, 36 times, I asked God to speak with me. Now, I received my wish. The Lord then spoke to me. He said, Who is this that obscures my plans with words without knowledge? Brace yourself like a man. I will question you and you shall answer me. Where were you when I laid the earth's foundation? Tell me if you understand, who marked off its dimensions? Surely you know, who stretched a measuring line across it? On what were its footings set? 
or who laid its cornerstone, while the morning stars sang together, and all the angels shouted for joy, who shut up the sea behind doors, when it burst forth from the womb, when I made the clouds its garment, and wrapped it in thick darkness, when I fixed limits for it, and set its doors and bars in place. Who when I said, This far you may come and no farther, here is where your proud waves halt. Have you ever given orders to the morning, or shown the dawn its place, that it might take the earth by the edges and shake the wicked out of it? The earth takes shape like clay under a seal, its features stand out like those of a garment. Can the one who contends with the Almighty correct him? Let him who accuses God answer him. I answered the Lord, I am unworthy. How can I reply to you? I put my hand over my mouth. I spoke once, but I have no answer. Twice, but I will say no more. Then the Lord spoke, Would you discredit my justice? Would you condemn me to justify yourself? Do you have an arm like God's? And can your voice thunder like his? Then adorn yourself with glory and splendor, and clothe yourself in honor and majesty. Unleash the fury of your wrath. Look at all who are proud and bring them low. Look at all who are proud and humble them. Crush the wicked where they stand. Bury them all in the dust together. Shroud their faces in the grave. Then I myself will admit to you that your own right hand can save you. Look at the behemoth, which I made along with you, and which feeds on grass like an ox. What strength it has in its loins, what power in the muscles of its belly. Its tail sways like a cedar, the sinews of its thighs are close-knit. Its bones are tubes of bronze, its limbs like rods of iron. It ranks first among the works of God, yet its maker can approach it with his sword. The hills bring it their produce, and all the wild animals play nearby. Under the lotus plants it lies, hidden among the reeds in the marsh. The lotuses conceal it in their shadow, the poplars by the stream surround it. A river rages, yet it is not alarmed. It is secure, though the Jordan should surge against its mouth. Can anyone capture it by the eyes, or trap it and pierce its nose? I fell to the ground and said, I know that you can do all things. No purpose of yours can be thwarted. You asked, Who is this that obscures my plans without knowledge? Both times God spoke with me, it happened amid a storm. God reminded me that He is the creator of everything. God reviewed His incredible activity of creating and sustaining the world, asking me if I could match that work. The Lord ends by asking if I was in a position to judge, saying it is presumptuous for me to believe that He should explain Himself to me. I felt very small. As a servant of God I was justified. My three friends, on the other hand, were severely punished by God. The Lord says they did not speak accurately about me. The remarkable aspect of the two conversations of God with me is that He still did not answer my questions. I prayed for my friends, and the Lord restored my fortune and gave me double what I had before. All my brothers and sisters and everyone who had known me before came and ate with me in my house. They comforted and consoled me, and each gave me a piece of silver and a gold ring. The Lord blessed the latter part of my life more than the first. I had one four zero 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 sheep. 6,000 camels, 1,000 yoke of oxen, and 1,000 donkeys.